Hi everybody, Jim Cipriani here to improve your life through employment. Today I want to talk about how to stop destructive behaviors. I'm talking about self-destructive behaviors that hold us back personally and professionally. We know what they are. This time of year, a lot of people begin overeating and over drinking, and many of us don't exercise or read enough, and some of us even have bad behavior at work or at home. And uh, I want to talk about a few techniques and share some of the psychology and business practices. Today we're going to make some reference to materials that uh, I referenced down below in the blog. So check out the books and the links to the videos because it really helps. And uh, the essence of this is, though, is we see this behavior, which is behavior that's above the surface, visible to others. And when this behavior is destructive, as individuals or leaders, we want to work on that behavior to make it better so that it doesn't reappear. But the problem really lies below the surface with an individual's beliefs and what's going on in their head. And the techniques really surround treating what's below the surface, the beliefs, in order to affect what you see above the surface, which is the behavior. You see, you can't really treat behavior with behavior. And many people try techniques like motivation or discipline, and individuals try things like willpower, but that is trying to treat the behavior, and in the end, that doesn't work in the long run. So I'm gonna share a model with you that is from this, the iceberg model of changing behaviors. So uh, it really talks about the behaviors that we see, these things that cause us issues, and the destructive behaviors are above the surface. But that's only 5% of what's going on. And the majority of what's going on is going on below the surface in our unconscious minds. That's 95% of what's going on. And that's where our beliefs lie, and, and our emotions, and, and all the rest. And you see, it's when the behaviors and the beliefs are not in agreement, when someone is behaving different from what their actual beliefs are, that incongruence creates this friction that causes negative behaviors to appear. And if you don't treat the beliefs below the behaviors, then the negative behavior is going to just continue to reappear. So that the idea behind this is twofold, is to use a little pain and pleasure model and also some kind of rightful reinforcement to figure out what the beliefs are in order to get them in alignment with the behaviors and it's then that the positive behaviors will begin to uh, form habits which is what we want. So I'm going to speak in a quick example uh, try to tie in the business aspect of it because as an owner we get to see a lot in the field and many years ago we had an employee here who we thought quite well of, I'll, I'll call him William and William, uh, as good of a guy as he was, had a need to be right and this need to be right kind of manifested itself in some fairly negative ways with the rest of the team. He would be known to kind of speak up and talk over people. Uh, if somebody wanted to, you know, ask how a word was spelled, he'd be the first one to, you know, speak up and try and tell them what to do. In training, he would be uh, sometimes a little bit argumentative and, and demonstrative and wanted to ensure that other people did things his way. And he lost some respect with his peers and it was holding him back and we had to address the behavior. So um, what we did is we got to the beliefs behind the behavior. He was behaving as if he was very smart, telling everybody that he was right all the time. But what we found is that the beliefs underneath there were just the opposite. He didn't really believe he was smart. Um, he unfortunately was brought up in a household where the parents weren't really uh, believers in him. And he had some trouble. I think he fell out of a private school. And he had some siblings who did better than him in life. And he was walking around with the belief that he wasn't really that smart. And it caused him to lash out in ways that just wasn't good. So what we did is uh, to both link some pain to that behavior. So we had to let him know pretty clearly that if he continued to uh, exhibit that sort of destructive behavior, that it would have some pretty serious consequences. And we hoped that that pain would help him avoid that. But more importantly, what we did to try and align the beliefs and his behavior is to um, have him pause. Uh, for instance, if somebody asked how a word was to be spelled, instead of yelling it out, what he could do is to write it down. He could actually check the spelling that way to make sure it was correct and go over and put it on the person's desk. And we would give him a pat on the back when he had this kind of cooperative uh, behavior. And in this way, we started to uh, align his beliefs that he actually was a pretty sharp guy. We believed he was. And when you can get the beliefs in alignment with the behaviors, then you're going to get a more positive outcome, and this is the way that we can avoid some of these self-destructive behaviors. Good luck.